Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> I hope my voice is coming through. Hello, everybody. This is Elder Terrence Patillo Sr. Coming to you with the truth in love. I hope everybody that hears this video, I hope that they're doing, they're doing well. And I hope that things are going the way they should go with you. Times are tough right now. Things are going on that the world has never seen. Or a lot of things are going on at a level that the world has never seen. But I'm hoping that you're making it through it. And I'm hoping that you find yourself in the will of God through all of the chaos through this great, as the temptation said many years ago, this great ball of confusion. I hope that you're doing well. Listen, I want to share, as you see the title of this video, the title is regarding Philip Brandon Gilmore and Sinful to Pete. Regarding Philip Brandon Gilmore and Sinful the P. Now, what's going on is this. Some time ago, Philip Brandon Gilmore, better known to some as Sinful the P, he did a video. He's a YouTuber. And he did a video. And in the video, he explained, or the video was taught in the video was titled, Why Did I Leave God? Or, or something of, of that nature. Within that video, he talked about how he had gotten saved, had at how he had given his life to God. And he brought it from when he was in sin as a sinner, a young man actually a young boy up until the time he became a young man. He talked about his life before being, being in sin. And then he talked about when he got saved within that demonstration, or may I say explanation, he talked about the day that they had a service at the church at the assembly, put it that way at the assembly and the assembly was called the way of holiness mission. He talked about how that he was compelled after the life that he had been given. He talked about how he was compelled to go up to the altar and how that God met him there and saved him. He gave his life to the Lord. In that video, he talks about one brother that he called his father in the Lord. And then he talked about me. Brother Terrence Patillo at the time. I wasn't Elder Patillo, but I was Terrence Patillo. Since that time, he put that video out and people got to know my name. Some people have come over to my channel. After that, I did a couple videos preaching, bringing a message, and he found the message. And took it and copied it and pasted it in his channel called Sinful the P and the Family. From that time, I've had a few more people come over to my channel. Not a lot. Couple here, couple there. That's not what this is about. I'm not bringing that up for that. Uh, then there were times... Just throughout his years of being online, there were times that he would bring me up, my name, tell a story about me or, or make reference to me. And people would ask him who I was and he would tell them. And then a few came over to meet me or to see what I was talking about on my channel. All right. Elder Terrence Patillo, uh, the Truth and Love channel. All right. Since that time, people have, since, his, his, since he made his passing, people have asked me 
to come online and speak. Some of those people that came over from from his channel uh, and say something. You know, and to be honest, a few have said that they appreciated the preaching that Philip did. The preaching, the word that he gave, the, the, the scriptures that he shared and the explanation of the scriptures. And they said that since they understood that I used to be one of his teachers among many at the, at the, at the assembly, they shared that they still wanted to hear the word, even though he has gone on, that he has passed away. And so I contemplated that because I was always going to be bringing the word uh, on this channel, but not maybe every week or maybe sometimes a couple of months would, would go by. Excuse me. <clears throat> However, and I'm still asking God to lead, but I believe that I will be on more frequently because if people are asking for the word and they know I'm not a pimp, and they know I'm not uh, somebody out here that's, that's in the criminal lifestyle. If they're still asking for the word, I feel obligated to give it. And so going forward, that's what I plan to do. Now, I'm not coming forth as a person that knows everything. I'm not coming forth as a person that, that's, that's looking to get a whole lot of members and, and all that type of th stuff. You know, I'm not looking to start a ministry so so to speak where i'm over these a bunch of people and all that kind of stuff all i want to do is bring the word anything that comes behind that that's a blessing and that will help others then i'm willing to do it as long as it is the will of god or as long as it is as, as it is in the will of god but back to philip brandon gilmore let me tell you something. When I got the call that he was gone, I could not believe it. As a matter of fact, I waited around two days, two or three days. Somebody had to tell me something. I called his number. I called both of his numbers because I couldn't believe it. I was stunned. I was I was discombobulated. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't. I just wasn't going to believe it. But the calls that I began to get came from reputable people, reputable sources. And I had to receive it. And let me tell you something. There was a pain in my heart. And to be honest, I just told my wife last night, I haven't been the same since. I haven't been the same since the day I heard it because I love Philip Brandon Gilmore. As one of my, uh, as my sister-in-law said, I loved him while he was saved and I love him while he wasn't. And I love him to this day. And as I was saying, I told my wife, there's a certain sadness that I haven't been able to shake. And to, to be honest, I was afraid to even cry because I thought that if I, if I, if I let the tears fall, that I would be destroyed, that I would be, I would disintegrate. I would turn into a big pile of, 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 of whatever I would, I would, I would have just melted. The floodgates would have came open and that would have, I wouldn't have been able to take it. So I held it back and I held it back and I held it back. But Philip meant a lot to me. Just as much as he said, and he told you guys that I meant to him and maybe even more. You know, when I first, my first coming into contact with him was really first. I, ca I came in contact with his mother, Marita Gilmore. Or in the beginning, well, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but either 
when I met her, she was Marita Mayberry, I think it was. And then later on, Marita Gilmore. That was a long time ago. Almost over 40 years ago. She was a strong woman. She was a bold woman. She was kind of tall and she was beautiful. But that woman did not play. She became a friend of my wife and I. Matter of fact, she, she became a friend of mine through another friend. And she became a friend of my wife, which is, was my fiance at the time, through somebody else. But when we both got married, when my wife and I got married, she became, she was friends to both of us already. Never forget the night before we got married, she brought us what they call a, a, a marriage kit. And uh, within the marriage kit, she had all the things that you need for a honeymoon. The, 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 uh, we don't drink alcohol, so she had some sparkling grape juice and, you know, just some pretty things and some, some usable things. And I'm not talking about toys and nothing like that, but some, some things that would make transitioning from singleness to, to matrimony, it made it easier. And so I remember her. I never forget her. I never forget her boldness as a woman of God. She did not play. She did not play at all. But she was nice and had one of the most beautiful smile. I also met Philip's father. He had been in the lifestyle. And he was he was at this time he was living saved. Well, he had gotten saved and uh, he's a pretty cool guy. You know, we've had several conversations and, and then he left God. And uh, eventually he got sick. And myself and another minister, we ministered to him while he was sick and in the hospital. And then a little while later, he passed away. So I was I was one of the ones that talked to him and ministered to him in the hospital. And, uh, you know, the connection between him and. And his mother, and then here comes Philip as a little boy, as a little baby. I remember when Philip was a little baby, I used to poke him in the stomach and call him Little Gilmore. What's up, Little Gilmore? How you doing, Little Gilmore? I was a little bit more country back then. I was like, What's up, Little Gilmore? Little Gilmore. And I punch him in the stomach, and he would just laugh. He never was a real excitable child. He never was, you know, just out there. He was always kind of like laid back as a child, you know, and uh, I used to have a, a lot of fun with him. And then as time grew, went on and he began to grow up, he was in because his mother was part of the ministry. He had to come and he was he ended up. I was a teacher in one of the classrooms. And at that particular time. He and I had a good relationship. And uh, he would help me out in the class. Some of the things I didn't know, because, you know, as you're teaching young people, you have to know something. You have to bring up something that they can relate to. So every now and then I would bring up something that related to the church. I mean, to the street. And I would get it mixed up or some, or I get in some type of dispute with, with some of the other children. And he would step up and say, uh, uh, L, uh, uh, Brother Terrence, because I wasn't the L at this time. He would say, Brother Terrence, it's this. Or is that? And he would set me straight. Or later on, after this class was over, he would give me the information. And so he kept me sharp in the classroom because he was sharp. And this was before he was even saved. But then that night or that Saturday when he talked about being getting saved, that was a beautiful day. And I don't know. What was the difference if you heard the story where one person was praying for him and he couldn't, he just couldn't get it. And then I prayed for him and, and he broke through. That's up. That's between God, him and, 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 and what happened. I don't know. I don't claim no special, you know, if I had it like that, 
Believe me, I'll be running around laying hands on everybody. But it's God that does the work. There's no man that can claim to do things and be the reason for things happening. It just so happened that it fell that day, but it was a glorious day. And from that time on, that boy was on fire. You know, I can remember coming to service sometimes and uh, I would be late sometimes uh, for whatever reason. And uh, when I got there, the building would be up. There was a buzz in the building and I would be like, what what happened? What what, what went on in service, you know, before I got here? And they would say Philip was praying. Philip, Philip led the prayer. Now you got elders and ministers and people that have been saved longer than him and all that type of stuff. But we we have a ministry that will let people, you know, we're not not like that where we hog in the microphone and can't nobody pray but this person and that person. But you didn't expect a young person like him to be praying like he was a seasoned old man. But that's how he was. He read scriptures for the preachers. He was on point with enthusiasm and excitement and accuracy. Because if you're going to read for the minister, you got to be sharp like that. Philip Brandon Gilmore, little brother Philip Brandon Grill Gilmore was just like that. And every time you seen him, the man was sharp. The man was clean. The man believed in dressing like a saint. He was sharp. He was clean. He had his colors put together and all of that. But he didn't look like those people out there in the street. He looked like people that were saved. He looked like he when he was young, he looked like a minister before he even came to minister. That's who he was. And come to find out. That his whole thing was whatever he got involved in, he was going to do it all the way. That's why people know him to be sharp in the scriptures. That's why people know him to have wisdom from the scriptures. That's how people came to know him as being somebody that had something to say. Because he got that when he was young. He gave himself to the word of God. He gave himself to prayer. He gave himself to living right. Back in the day. Back when he was a youngster. He was sold out. And everybody around knew that he was sold out. However. As time went on. Things began to change. As he began to get older, things changed. But once again, he was always clean. He was always dressed. He could, he could read scriptures like anybody that he, he read the scriptures like somebody, like a scholar and could break them down like a scholar. He was just like that. So if anybody haven't seen the YouTube video that he did, why did I leave God or how did I leave God or something like that? Look that up and you will find out who he was and how he did things. And I can truly say as a witness, it is so because I saw it among with other people. But I got some notes wrote down here that I want to be mindful of and not forget Simple the P. I just got through talking to you about Philip Gilmore. But now I'm talking to you about Simple the P. Because there were some things, there were some circumstances like what hits everybody. There were some things that happened that caused him to be discouraged and he left God. He decided not to fight whatever it was. And he had mentioned many times because he and I had spent hours on the telephone. We spent hours. I mean, we've had, we've had conversations for four hours. And so there's a lot of things I know, a lot of things he told me, and a lot of things I can feel by reading through the lines. 
You know, one of his favorite things was, you know, listen to the silence. It'll tell you more than the sound will. And so there were things that he would say that I would listen to the silence. And I understood what that silence, what the message inside of the silence. But I wrote down here, simple to pee. Never wanted to be a person that have did anything. He decided to, he didn't, he didn't want to have do anything that he decided to do. He wanted to be what he said he was and who he was. He believed in walking the walk and talking the talk and talking the walk and walking the talk. That might have been mixed up, but you know what I'm saying? He believed in what he said. He said that. He was not going to pretend to be something he didn't intend to be. And he was serious. And just like he was when he was saved, that's what he gave his life to. And that's how he gave his life to what you all call or a lot of people call the ism. The game. That's everybody's favorite name. The game. He gave himself to that wholeheartedly. And one of the reasons why his name was sinful, the P, the key word is sinful. And he knew that he was backslidden. He knew that he left God. And so he was not going to play. He didn't want to be mistaken. He didn't want to be called a church boy. He didn't want to be mistaken for somebody that's trying to do the right thing. He didn't want to straddle the fence. He didn't want to say one thing and be doing another. So he named himself sinful. I am a sinner and I intend on sinning and I'm sinning like the biggest sinner ever sinned. That's how he felt. But there was he ran into a dilemma, though. And his dilemma was. He. Received the gospel at an early age and the life that he lived and the miracles that he saw and the different things that he saw about the spirit and how he saw the spirit move. He could never forget that. And that word that he studied day in and day out. That word that he studied when they didn't have lights at home and he had to light papers and, 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 and use a cigarette lighter to read the word. That word that he got packed down in him. He ran into that. Why he was trying to be a pimp or why he was being a pimp. He ran into that. The purpose was not. To use that. The word of God and his lifestyle, the purpose was not. To use that in that lifestyle. But like many others. See the word of God is this. The word of God is like this. And it's just like you all say. Or they say about the game. The game is so applicable. That How do they say it? The game is so. Uh, uh, you can apply it to anything. It's so impeccable that it's implicable. It's so impeccable that it's applicable to everything, or all types of works, work, uh, 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 all types of walks of life. And so, you will find that people in business, they will use the word of God to 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 set up their business. People that are leaders, and they're not saved; they're just leaders. But they found value in the word of God. They're motivational speakers. They can say anything. A lot of them have the gift of gab. A lot of them could, could, could you talk about a spectacular vernacular. A lot of those people have words. They're wordsmiths. They're scholars and philosophers and all those different things. But they got to go back and get the word. Because that's how powerful the word is. There are people in science, they have to apply some of the things that they learn about the word just to understand science. The word is just that powerful. So people all over the world, they are finding that the word of God permeates everything. 
And so this young man, as he began to live that lifestyle, he ran into some situations where that word worked. It got him out of some things and it got him into some things. That wasn't the intention, but when you find out you got this tool that you can use to manipulate, you got this tool that you can use to get you to make you a winner. When you got this tool that you can use to navigate things in life, you're going to use it. And so the dilemma was, I'm a stone cold gentleman of leisure. I'm a stone cold gentleman of leisure. The pimp word. I'm stone cold, but as I live my life, I got this word that keeps jumping up. And on top of that, at times, I got the spirit of God telling me, come on back to this word. Come on back to this life. Come on back and live for me. Come on back and preach this gospel in the fullness without being tainted by what you're doing now. But like many of us did, when I was a backslider, I hardened my heart, which was dangerous. Because everybody that hardens their heart does not get back to God. Just like some won't come to him that he deals with, there's others that's been there with him that have left. And when he calls them, they harden their hearts. They say no because they want to do what they want to do. But I'm here to tell you that we as humans, we got to understand the bottom line in this life is we got to live for God and actually live in a way that we know that when we die, we're going to die right. Philip, Brandon Gilmore, he sinful, the P, he always said that I'm a fool. Because I know I should be living the gospel. I didn't say that. He said it. And he made sure that he said it a lot of times. Because for some reason, he wanted you to know the truth. For some reason, he cared enough to... to it, it, sometimes I, I used to laugh because I'm like, this, this man here done lost it. <laughs> it used to be funny because I've had the... I've had the the opportunity to talk to some of his students, as he called it, his female students. And one time I talked to one and uh, I guess he stepped in and he asked her, he said, listen, if you die right now, what's going to happen? She said, I'm going straight to hell. He said, how you know that? She said, the word said it. And the reason why I'm saying that's kind of crazy, because who who telling people that? And they're trying to manipulate them to get them to go do something else. But he had to do that because that's what was in him. When the word, listen, the word came to me when I was 13 years old, I believe it was. From that day to this day, I have never been the same. When you hear the word of God. You will never be the same. And if you receive it, you can't be the same. You can't be the same. Listen, some people say that word of God is just black, white paper and black ink. But to God's people, it's the power of God. Somebody said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That's the word. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power that brings salvation. It's the power that brings deliverance. It's the power. Please understand that this thing is serious. And let me tell you right now, I don't have, I'm going to tell you. I, as a human being, have no clue what happened to Philip when he passed away? I mean, did he go to be with the Lord or did he go to hell? 
because that's what's at stake. Let's cut, cut, cut and dry like he always did. All I'm doing is telling you what he, he told you. He said he knew he was a fool. He said that if he died right now, he'll be lost and, and go to hell. So with that being said, I don't know where he is because, first of all, the report that I heard was he when he was going through what he went through to, go, to, to make his transition, he made a phone call to 911. Now, a person that's sharp as he is and knows what, what he knows and understand what he knows, calling 911, 911 is one thing, but calling on the Lord is another thing. And in my love for him, not just my love for him, but my knowledge of the mercy of God, it's quite possibly that if he called 911, he called on God too and repented. But here's the, here's the rub, as they say. That may not have happened. He may not have gotten a chance to do that. But he told you that if he doesn't live right, he's going to be lost if he dies. Let's put him to the side for a few minutes. What about you? What about us? Do we know how we're going to die? Do we know when we're going to die? Will we get a chance to say anything before we die? And if we need to repent, if we've been in sin and we need to repent, how do we know God is going to accept the repentance? There's scriptures, in the, there's, there's scriptures that point to the fact that there are people that even they couldn't even repent because God wouldn't even give, give them the words. There's other people that harden their hearts. So it's not even guaranteed if a person asks God to save them right at the point of death. There's no guarantee. So do we take a chance on that? Or do we get saved? Do we give our life to God now? I told somebody that according to the scripture, a tree fall where it lays. When a tree falls, that's where it is. It don't matter what you say or how you thought or what it looked like other than what it is, that tree fell and it's going to lay there and that's it. Wherever Philip is right now, wherever the tree fell, that's where it was. That's where it's at. But here's one thing we do know, because when he was here, even in sin, there was something about him that wanted you to know the truth. Because he understood that ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And that was his that was his desire for you to know the truth, even though the last we knew he hadn't accepted it as far as giving his life to God. I don't want him to be lost. I don't want him to to be in hell. But he knew it. Just like some of you know it, some of the things I'm saying is not foreign, it's not a mystery, but you know that you need to be saved. You know that you need to give your life to God. You know. We can't worry about him right now. Wherever he is, we can't get him back. Now it's time to live and live for God. I don't care what you're doing. The, la the bottom line is, is that you be saved. I don't care what type of job you have. I don't care what type of position you have. I don't care about what type of activism you're doing. I don't care what you're doing. Politics, whatever, right now. And see, I'm, a, I'm at an older age. And even though he died young, 38 years old, I'm telling you now, the mindset begins to change when you notice that a lot of people are dying and you realize that, a songwriter wrote, he said, we're crossing over one by one. We're fast approaching to the setting sun. Don't let them catch you with your work undone. We're crossing over one by one. The bottom line is that you be saved. I don't care about you being rich. 
God is not in but Marvin Wine said God is not impressed with your American Express. But that you be saved. He don't care about your accolades. He don't care about your accomplishments on this earth except for you being saved. Now, you should do good. You should, as they say, pay it forward and anything you could do to help people be better on a general sense. But nothing is more important than people being saved. Nothing is more important. And so some of you that have asked me to come. As I said, as God leads, I want to be more frequent and I hope you come. I hope you like and share videos and get people to come over. But the truth is always going to be that you get saved, that you be saved, that you be delivered. That you be set free. That you have your head lifted up. And walk in a new life. He came. Jesus came that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundantly. That's in heaven. And in earth. That's with the Lord. Wherever he is. I want to be with him. We need to be saved. Just like the, the word says. Just like Philip said. Whether he received it or not. We can be thankful that he gave what he thought was the word. But he ran into a dilemma. He could not. Listen, the scripture says here in Matthew 6, 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You can you cannot serve God and mammon. The dilemma. I'm a sinner. I'm out here doing my thing. But I got this word in me. You can't do both because it sends a mixed message. You got to pick one or the other. I'm proud of the fact that he would tell people the truth. There's so much truth that he told that it amazes me for somebody to be in sin. But it don't matter. People need to be saved and see a person on one side of the track. And if he was here right now, he would tell you that I'm right. Listen, I think this is going to be a two for a two a two part. So I'm going to end it now and ask you to come back. Or I'm going to send you a video or do a video. So with that being said, this is Elder Patillo, Elder Terrence Patillo, senior. I hope you understood and I hope you got something out of what I'm saying. And I'll clarify it even more. I'll elaborate on it even more in the next video. But. Pray, I pray that you hear the words. I pray that you go before God, ask him to save you, ask him to deliver you, repent of your sins, give your life to him. That's all that counts. That's all that really matters. When we die, do we want to be lost? Come on now. In Jesus name.